Mr. Edison Dyes stuck his head in the door at the old dealership and said, who's Malcolm Smith? He had a funny little French beret hat on, and uh, I said, I am. And he said, I want to hire you to raise my husky. And uh, I'd been reading the English magazines. I knew what a husky was, because they were winning motocross races in Europe. And my dream was to go to Europe and ride six days. And we started, I was riding a Greaves then for Nick Nicholson. And a sponsorship on a Greaves was Nick gave you $100 off dealer price, a bike, and he paid your entry fee if you won the race. That was the sponsorship in those days. And uh, anyway, Edison and I started arguing about the bikes. I showed him my Greaves with that big aluminum frame. And, I said, it's so strong and it never breaks. And this little husky's got all these spindly little tubes on the frame and it won't hold up. And he said, Swedish steel. And we argued for about 30 minutes. And he finally said, I'll send you to the six day trials in Sweden if you ride my husky. And that perked me up because I was making $100 a week and I had no chance of ever riding in Europe on that salary. And uh, I said, let's go try this bike out. He had it, one in the back of his pickup. We drove out to Rattlesnake Mountain. We had a kind of a semi-motocross course there with a bunch of uphill whoops and downhills and bumps and turns. And I took off on this bike, started the first kick. Greaves usually started on about the 20th kick. And, uh, I made one lap around the course. I pulled in where he was standing by the truck and I said, you've hired yourself a rider. This bike was so much better than anything. Torquey and just really magic. He kept promising me he was sending me the six days, but I never got the tickets. He got closer and closer and it was about two days before the six days started. I called him and he said, well, meet me at the LA airport. So I met him at the airport. He hands me a Volkswagen key set. And he said, I have a Volkswagen van that we transport our luggage around for the street rides I do in Europe. He had BMWs over there. He would do street rides, guided street rides. And he said, you're going to Oslo, Norway, not Sweden, you're getting my uh, Volkswagen. I said, how do I find it? He said, well, it's the red one, the yellow one, or the green one, or maybe, yeah, one of those colors. Just keep trying the key in it until the key works, and then that's it. Because he had other people doing all the logistics in Europe. So I get to uh, uh, Oslo, Norway, two in the morning, it's raining like hell. I'm trying, you know how many Volkswagen vans there were in those days? I'm running up and down the airport trying the key. I finally get the one that works. Drive to the downtown, stay in a hotel, get up the next morning. And in Norway, you drive on the right side of the road. Sweden, you drive on the other side. You get to the border and you have to switch. And that's kind of shocking, jet lag. But then I kept seeing all these pretty young college girls hitchhiking all over Europe. In those days, it was a safe thing to do, and that's what they did. So there's girls only. I pull over and load up the van, and then if there were guys with them, I just kept going. So I'd talk to them. Someone needed to go to Oribru, uh, and I'd take them there, and then another finally made my way to Sweden.